along with mathematics as in physics. He wants to say a few things before I propose a vote of thank. My very dear friend, Indra Mohan Kapai. Friends, right in the beginning, I must confess that I have almost uh, snatched this opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm a I'm a friend of about uh, 35 years winter with uh, Dr. M. M. Sharma, and you see, as when a friend becomes an admiring friend, that person has a tendency to go overboard in praise. Uh, so I would not like to, as, uh, because I was told that uh, by one o'clock we have to get up. And uh, so therefore, I would not like to speak much. But one thing I would say that uh, I am deeply impressed by the presentation of Mr. Abhim Sharma. There is one thing also I would like to share with you. And that is, it is not that M.M. Sharma is a pioneer in this field. He is introducing this field in uh, India. I think that he was a pioneer in this field. He is one of the first few, even in the United States, to create this concept of what is called electronic teaching, electronic book, electronic university, etc. When it was in the very formative stage there, even in the States, I think he entered uh, into this field. Uh, having said this, I would say one thing. Uh, that is, you see, his entire presentation was based on mathematics, mathematics teaching. I, as a I, I, I am a student of physics. I know that physics would be absolutely helpless without mathematics. As a matter of fact, mathematics is the, uh, is the poem of God. I mean, it is how the God creates his uh, activity. I mean, enunciates his activity in the form of mathematical, simple mathematical symmetric <coughs> formulation. Many mathematicians, and I'm linking it up to what M. M. Sharma is doing. You see, many mathematicians, they have uh, created and solved equations which lie absolutely dormant without any use for hundreds of years, and it is only later that the physics made use of them. So many polynomials, so many differential equations we have made use of in physics, because physics investigates what is called the uh, phenomenological world, microscopic and the macroscopic. And all these equations, the Riemann equations, space equations, differential equations, all of them have been used now. Now I'm linking it up with this, though Dr. Abram Sharma has built up this, only for the mathematics. But I think it can be of great use in physics. As a matter of fact, in physics, the use of this, uh, this whole thing is much, much more than even in mathematics. You see, uh, my two previous speakers have they said that about the phobia about mathematics. You see, which is universally shared internationally, that is, America and everywhere. But yet, you will find, in India in particular, people who are in love with physics, uh, in love with uh, mathematics. You still find that. But I have not yet found anybody, any student, who is in love with physics. You see, I mean, absolutely physics is love lost. So therefore, and there is a reason for that. There is a reason for that, and the reason basically is that the physics is uh, based on concepts, on applied concepts. And at times, our limitation, the blackboard limitation that we have, which deals only with two-dimensional world, in order to picture, in order to understand something which can be projected in three dimensions, the four dimension, when the time also becomes the fourth dimension, three dimension we can understand, length, breadth, height. But when you also have the fourth dimension also, time dimension, and all these dimensions are simultaneously working, we do not know as to where this time dimension is, uh, where is it situated, where it is located. And the whole world depends upon the interplay of these four. And as you go higher, then there are 26 dimensions, 30 dimensions, that's it, which are very difficult to conceptualize. So therefore, this concept, the absence of concept, which can be picturized by the technology which M. M. Sharma is developing, I think that will be of a great help to physics. The physics will become something which is not to be marked, which is not to be only vomited during the examination, but something which is appreciated, which is understood. Because you begin to appreciate something only when you begin to understand this. And I find, you know, for example, uh, we have even the simple concept, I mean, I'm not dealing with the higher, what we do in the college or the university level, but even the simple concept of the propagation of light. Now, how does the light propagate itself? 
how does the electric vector and the magnetic vector, how the propagation of that in the three dimension, it can be beautifully explained through computer graphics. I mean, even the interference pattern, because we think the interference pattern only the lines are getting. Without realizing how the interference pattern, you see how in the three dimensions, in the three, three dimension, how does the inter pattern, in, interference pattern actually look? It doesn't look like lines. Lines are only projection on a plane. So therefore, I mean, so many examples can be given. I mean, collision of particles with varying energies, with varying angles, and how do the particles collide? And if you change the parameters slightly, how does the collision would change? How does the angles, etc., everything would change? And the higher concept can also be learned. My friend was telling me, even the galaxies, this intergalactic movement. The galaxies moving from, uh, I mean, they may, they, may, they may interact without even ever knowing that. And if you, can, if you can project, because the intergalactic space is so much, billions, uh, millions and millions of light years, and they may pass through each other without ever realizing, which we don't realize now, but if you see it in the computer, so much interest in cosmology will be generated. I mean, I can go uh, so many examples, you know, ele electronics, etc. What I would like to say is that, uh, please, Mr. Dr. M. M. Sharma, at some level, you should also expand yourself. Expanding yourself, in that is, stepping out of mathematics, Oh, no, you are expanded enough, <laughs> but I am saying that stepping up in mathematics also and the application of mathematics in the other branches also, this would be great. And I don't want to name any people, there are many people who are, some of them are sitting here also, uh, because if I name some people, I will be forgetting the names of the others also who are doing pioneer work in this. And I think, um, with our interaction, you can get in touch with them. There are lots of people who are doing lots of work in this field, in the field of physics. And that's why I am saying, uh, I will conclude that in physics, it will be more rewarding to use this thing. Though we have seen it only in the application of mathematics. I, uh, I will end by saying that uh, M.M. Sharma has very rightly stated that uh, he is not motivated by any amount of any, any profit motivation in this. The motivation is patriotism, in a way. That, that is returning to the mother country what he has got from the mother country. Is right? That is his uh, uh, motivation is mission, not commission. So therefore, therefore, it's very affordable, and I think all of us who can participate, who can um, also help in his effort, would be, would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, would be contributing to the. And in the end, I would like also to share a joke, if you allow me. You see, a uh, lot of in the sense that uh, people of my generation, of course, I'm saying people of my generation, I mean, there are lots of, uh, I mean, they're not very computer savvy. It is one thing not to be a computer savvy, but it is quite another thing, I mean, quite another thing to be technology, anti-technology. I think the time has come when nobody can afford to be anti-technology healthy because the creative energies of hundreds of other people can also increase your creativity. But in this process of creating this uh, creativity, uh, dependence upon computers and technology, one thing should be there, that the individual creativity should also not be lost sight of. And it is only in this context that the joke was there. Please laugh at it after it. <laughs> that is, somebody was saying that, uh, because Dr. Sharma made a mention of uh, algorithm, that everybody should have an algorithm. So somebody asked him, what's the algorithm for making tea? He said, you take tea, put it in, you take some water, put it in a utensil, put it in a gas, turn the gas on, the water would boil, put this, etc., etc., you know. Then uh, he said, asked that, uh, Supposing the gas is on and the water is already there in the form. So that was only computer and that is algorithmic dependent. He thought about this and he said, switch off the gas, <laughs> throw the water, now the problem will reduce to the original one. <laughs> and then one, two, three, four, five, six. I think, I think, uh, why, I, why I say this is because uh, I find that the dependence on technology, then your I mean, creativity would also increase. Thank you very much. I told you that I have snapped this opportunity. Thank you very much.